What's going on guys? Just another afternoon in the garage here. Um, wanted to do a quick video on uh, like an alignment on a sport quad. I don't think this is covered too much and uh, while there are way more precise ways to do this, this is how I've always done it and it always works for me. Now keep in mind this only uh, really works on uh, live axle or solid axle sport quads. If you have like an independent rear suspension like an outlaw or something like that, it, this isn't going to work. So. Um, for that, you'll need to find the center line of the ATV, and I'm sure it's in your manual. The service manual will probably describe how to do it, but this is how I've always done it. And uh, a lot of people um, can eyeball everything and do a pretty good job, uh, including myself. I can eyeball it and get it pretty close. And, um, and just remember, this isn't something to stress over. This isn't a, a, this isn't a, a sport car or, or just a regular, you know, an automobile where you want to have a perfect alignment so your uh, your your tread lasts a long time. This is in the dirt and the sand. Your tread's going to be fine, but you do want it to track straight. So <clears throat> what I like to do is always make sure your if you have a caster adjustment to adjust that first. Thankfully, these housers on this uh, Z400 doesn't have that, so uh, don't worry about a caster adjustment. Um, your camber you want to set I usually honestly I usually do the caster by eye um, but sometimes I'll pull out a level uh, you, you just really need a you need a straight edge uh, you can use a plumb bob you can use all kinds of ways to get your to get your camber right uh, this is a really helpful tool and it's pretty cheap on um, on Amazon I think it's like maybe 10 or 15 bucks but this will give you this will kind of give you your uh, your degrees you can just and it's magnetic so you can stick it to the hub or or wherever um but you don't have to get this scientific and i usually don't so um right now camber's good um we're gonna focus on the toe this is where most people get a little confused on what to do and if you if you've ever bent a tie rod replace the tie rod put aftermarket a arms on really done any suspension work you should probably check the toe and this is a great way to do it and it's really simple um <clears throat> so I'll kind of start from the beginning trying to keep this short and sweet for you guys uh, what I do is first of all you want to make sure um, you kind of have the right height set up for you but what you want to do is push the suspension up and down front and rear get on it jump up and down a few times let the suspension settle and then um, it's better if you have someone that can sit on it and hold the bar straight but what I always do is use these uh, tie downs I just put them on the handlebars and then run them down to the foot pegs. I, I get on the quad, make sure the bars are as straight as they can be, straighten out both arms, make sure your handlebars are straight, and then I tighten them one at a time and then recheck the bars. So the bars are straight, uh, everything's locked in. Then what you're gonna wanna do is get some string um, and either some two by fours or what I like to use is jack stands. And you wanna run, you wanna run the string around the tire. Now, on this quad, in this particular setting, the rear is wider than the front, which works out for this video, but usually you want the rear a little bit narrower in width than the front. That's usually how you want it. A lot of people will set the rear wider than the front for personal preference if they want their quad to turn a certain way. Um, I will probably narrow up the front a little bit on this adjustable Lone Star. I probably will bring one spacer to the outside. But anyway, if if your rear is narrower than your front, you just want to use some two by fours or use two more jack stands to kind of space it out. Then what you want to do is you want to make sure this string, in my case, I have it touching the back of the tire and just barely touching the front of the tire, the, the front of the rear tire. You can also, if your, if your rear end is narrower than your front, you want to bring the string out and you just want the measurements to be the same. So, this, so say your string runs right here you want the same measurement here and here on your tire or your rim it's usually better to measure from the rim if you're doing it that way so once you get to that then we're going to come up here at the front <clears throat> and keep in mind before you do any of this it's a good idea to loosen these adjuster these uh tie rod nuts keep in mind one is left hand thread and one is right hand thread um, so you want to loosen those first and then you want to take your measurements. You can see this one's way off. Now, Lone Star, I believe, calls for a quarter inch toe in, which in my opinion is a little too much. Um, I like an eighth inch toe in, which means 
that the front distance right here between the rim and the string will be an eighth inch uh, greater on this end than this end. That way the front of the end is pigeon toed an eighth of an inch inward, if that makes sense. So that's what we're gonna do on both sides, one at a time, and then we're gonna recheck and make sure that we're at an eighth inch. And, uh, and, and keep in mind, this really, this only works if your bearings are in perfect shape, your swing arm bearings, um, axle bearings, nothing's bent, damaged. That's how this works, and I know everything's in good shape. I just, the reason I'm doing this is because I haven't aligned it since I put on the LTR swinger. And it's just, it's honestly good to do this once a season or so. Things just get out of whack from hitting stuff and whoops and jumps. So it's a good idea to do this. And then obviously you can set it up differently um, however you ride. And there's going to be some, <laughs> I'm sure some pro mechanics jumping in the comment section saying, no, this is wrong. Do it this way. And that's fine. There are definitely better ways to do it. Um, but this is how it has always worked for me. It's simple to do, it's quick to do, it's easy to do in your garage or your driveway, and uh, it gives you a pretty dang uh, accurate measurement. So I'm gonna be doing it on the Suzuki, and then I'm also gonna be doing it on the uh, Honda 250R here. You don't want it on the stand like I have it here, you want it on the ground, kind of like I described earlier. Um, I'm not gonna do a how-to um, measuring it and adjusting it and this and that. I think you guys get the picture. I just kind of wanted to give you a, a brief overview of what to do because I don't really, I think it's covered a little bit, um, but this is just a really easy way to do it, quick uh, and pretty precise in my opinion. So um, appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think. I probably have forgotten a few things. I'm just doing this on my phone here. I just figured I would make a quick video while I'm, uh, while I'm getting ready to do it. So thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Okay, I did forget a few things because I'm an idiot. But uh, what we're going to do, when you, when you want to adjust it, so, so let's just say our measurement's off. It's clearly off just looking at this. This is not an eighth of an inch here difference. Uh, what you're going to do, like I said earlier, make sure these lock nuts are backed off. <clears throat> and all you're going to do is, is spin the tie rod. I usually just do it by hand. Uh, and you can see here, you spin it one way. You spin it one way. It's going to adjust it in you spin it another way out in that case it was in i had it backwards but so now it's going out kind of see so that's all you're going to do on both sides once you get it all set tighten everything back up give it another measurement undo everything and go ride enjoy all right cut